Okay, just start the recording. So, yeah, let's see. Once I share my screen, just tell me if the screen is visible because I wouldn't be able to see the. Is my screen visible? Uh, yes. Okay. Right. Welcome to day two. Now, what are we going to learn today? We are certainly not going to learn why this pathway. We are going to learn more about services. But why this pathway helps us in those services, you will learn. Yeah, we will have some services. We will have Q&A and then we will also have a hands-on. So there is, a, there is a part of this where we will show you a lab. I guess you most of you have already done labs, but still, there are some things I need to tell you. This remains same. Before anything, this remains same. If you ever face a problem, then what do you do? You go to the FAQ section. FAQ document, that is. You can have the support alias, that is the whatever the um, Quick Labs gives you, Quick Lab support. After you get the reply, you can continue your courses. That's pretty much the same as last time. That's pretty much the same it will be. Uh, other than that, how many of you have used uh, Quick Lab support? How do they reply? For me, they reply in 15 minutes. Did any of you need quick lab support in any way? Anyone? Nobody required quick lab support. Yeah, they replied pretty quick. And I also heard somebody had their account blocked because like it usually happens when you try to uh, access some of the resources that is not really present within the scope of students. So that's what happens, but we make mistakes. We accept that, no worries. So yeah, um, I guess we already saw how much you completed. So let's get right to it. Well, firstly, what is serverless? Before knowing what is serverless, I want someone to tell me the difference between IAS, PAS and SAS. Let's go. It will not be an interesting session if I don't ask questions. If I just keep speaking on and on, it will be very boring. What is the difference between IAS, PAS, and SAS? OK. Let's boil it down easier. What is IAS? Simple question, what is IAS? Anybody remembers? Let's see, let's see. You can unmute. You can write whatever you want. Let's see, let's see, 30 seconds. Right. What is IES? What is PS? What is SAS? Anyone? Hmm. This is IES. What is PS? Product and service. Example, give me an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, example. Platform as a service, yes. And SAS. Okay. Right. So a quick recap of what IAS, PAS, and SAS is. IAS is infrastructure as a service. PAS is platform as a service. And SAS is software as a service. IAS provides the place where you can hold or you can host PAS services, okay? And PAS is a place where you can build SAS services. So in IAS, you have virtual machines, anything that is physical, it's infrastructure, right? Machines, storage, anything that is IAS. On that, you will have things like OS and then anything that helps you build a software, that is PAS. And the software itself is SAS. Yeah, SAS is Office 365 correctly pointed out. So I hope that was a quick uh, recap of IAS, PS, and SAS. Well, that brings us to the question, what is serverless? Well, let's see. According to the definition, this is the very definition that Google gives us. Serverless computing is a cloud computing execution model in which the cloud provider allocates the machine resources and demand. 
taking care of the servers on behalf of their customers. What it means is that we as customers, we don't have to care about what's running on the background. All we have to do is care about uh, how we are deploying our application, how we are deploying our software, how we are giving the access, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have to care about what servers are going on, what the infrastructure is, will it scale up or down, if it's elastic. We don't have to care about that. All we have to care about is what we're deploying, what we're building, et cetera, et cetera. Now, now brings that brings us to the question, why should we use serverless? Well, firstly, since we don't care about anything on the background, anything that is the machines or whatever, I don't, I have a less of a headache. So easy deployment. Plus it's automatically scalable, elastic, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have to care about the maintenance as well. And since it is elastic and scalable, it's cost effective, right? But this is not the main question that I wanted to ask. If serverless means that I don't care about the background resources, what is serverless? Is it IAS, PAS, or SAS? Or is it something else? Let's see. You can try it. No, no, no issues in trying. Wrong answers are always welcome. SAS, PAS, okay. Any any other tries? Right. So um thing is it's neither. It's not IAS, it's not PAS, it's not SAS, it's FAS. It stands for function as a service. The thing is, in, in serverless, the main thing that we try to achieve is that we remove the headache of anything like provisioning machines, provisioning OS, etc., etc., from the custom. So what tends to happen is if we have something like that, the customer will only worry about building their software or deploying their website, but that's it. If it's scalable, if it's uh, elastic, if it's uh, highly available, if it's fault tolerant, all these things are taken care of by serverless. So this is a very text-based value. Don't really care about this. You need to care about these red lines that I've mentioned. It's pay for value because we don't pay for idle servers. It's scalable. That's what I meant. And they also have scaled to zero, which means there is a time where if nobody is using your server, the number of machines allocated to it, storage allocated to it will also be zero. And so they cost nothing when not in use. Well, these are some, these are some of the functions that we have. Now, how many of you have uh, come across any of these functions that are on the screen? Any of these functions, Cloud Functions, App Engine, Knative, BigQuery, Cloud Run, Event Arc, Workflows, Cloud Storage, anything. If you have, could you tell me what it is used for? It's writ literally written there, but still. Give it a try, give it a try. And uh, some of you have completed courses and uh, quests, so. I guess uh, it should be pretty much self-explanatory. What do you think? What uh, what is what is Kubernetes is used for storing and containers? Yep, it's it's not really storage. It's more for management, but still it flows. K eight stands for Kubernetes. What is App Engine? What do you think? What is App Engine? Um, how many of you have used App Engine or maybe even Cloud Storage? How many of you have used Cloud Storage? Like, don't tell me you have done quests and not used Cloud Storage. Everything has some sort of a connection to Cloud Storage. Came across BigQuery, okay. BigQuery is a very important data warehouse. It's It has inbuilt ML and plus it's scalable. So Cloud Run, okay, okay. Use Cloud Storage in GCP Lab anywhere. Pretty much these, across this course, you will come across a lot of these services. Let me tell you all about these one by one. 
Okay. Uh, so cloud functions. The main thing is this function as a service, as I told you. So you might see App Engine as platform as a service. Don't get confused. The thing is, serverless means I will not care about the underlying infrastructure. But the thing is that when I'm taking the least accessible method, I will take FAS because that is the least amount of care I have to take. Right. So this is cloud functions. All you have to do is choose a runtime that is your Python, PHP, whatever, and upload up, upload some code. And this will take care of the rest. All you have to do. You don't have to care about what what the machine you're provisioning, what OS, blah, blah, blah. All you have to care about is what my if my code is working and if I'm choosing the right runtime. Now, don't be like I wrote my code in Python and I'm selecting the runtime as Java. No, don't, don't, please don't do that. So cloud functions will take care of that. Now, App Engine is a rather interesting one. This is platform as a service. I told you about App Engine last time, this PAS. What it helps in is build and deploy apps using traditional web frameworks, not really just web frameworks, but other things also. Right, so the main thing is this is used for web apps. So if you are making a web app of any sort, you would use App Engine. K, K native is basically containers for Kubernetes. And the main thing about Kubernetes or containers is that, okay, before before talking about this, how many of you can tell me what is a container? What is a container? Kubernetes, Docker, what is a container? Right, right. If, if you are going for DevOps, then this is very important. Without Kubernetes and Docker, um, it's very hard. If you want, you can Google the answer. No issues. Google the answer and tell me. Containers are packages of software that contains all of the necessary elements to run in any environment. Okay. Right, right. So basically, the whole idea is if I have something like one app that I want to run, but I want to run it in many places and in many forms, then I would be using containers because otherwise I would require multiple machines and I would have to run that app on multiple machines and every machine will get wasted. There is a diagram that I haven't showed you yet, but uh, I guess it's part of the future slides. In that diagram, you will see how, how a VM is beneficial and how moving to containers is even more beneficial. Yeah, pretty much all, all these answers are correct. By the way, just disclaimer, if, if you think that you cannot Google, you can Google. You can Google and tell me the answer, but don't copy paste. Yeah. Try to try to have a little bit of creativity, right? So this helps you manage your cloud native applications for Kubernetes. BigQuery, as I said, it's a data warehouse. It's also helps in acts as a database. So this is fully managed. Fully managed means the whole headache is yours and highly scalable. Since it's data, we have to make it highly scalable. And it has built in ML. So yeah, with BigQuery ML, you can have data and you can directly run ML models on it. So don't have to really make models and whatever. Cloud Run. Cloud Run is very much connected with containers. This one, it runs stateless containers on a fully managed environment. Again, fully managed means the full headaches yours or on Anthos. I will talk about Anthos later, so don't worry. What is Anthos? Why is Anthos used? Don't worry. Anthos is Google's, uh, I would say, celebrity type of service. So we have event arc. These are not really the important ones, these two, but uh, let's go through them anyways. Event arc is the, uh, the, the definition is not really right. So basically what it used to, it is used for is actually delivering Google services, not just Google services, delivering any sort of services you can have your own services like a pub sub service or maybe even a chat service and these will actually implement them and deploy them asynchronously that means that one can go on and other other can stop etc etc that's why it has multiple events and it makes 
a total network out of it. So it's known as an event arc. Right, workflows. I guess everybody knows about workflows. It means that one thing leads to another and another thing leads to another. This is a workflow. And this is a serverless state machine. Hey guys, sorry for that. Apparently, Google does not love me. So, yeah. Uh, the meeting still recording. Okay, right. I need one. Can you re-explain event arc? So basically, uh, suppose you have a lot of services. Okay, suppose you have um, sort of a chat service, uh, sort of a uh, any any services that you have. It can be something if you are serving someone or you have a website and all of these services all of these have to be worked upon or be deployed simultaneously but you don't want them to be synchronous it does it means that if one is running another one has to run or if one needs to run then another another one is
Hey guys, am I audible now? Oh, fine. Fine. Okay. Um, how? Uh, what is the last thing you guys heard? What was he talking about before I went offline? You were explaining event arc. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, event arc. Uh, did you catch it or do I explain again? Okay, let's just explain again. So basically, if you have a lot of services, if you have a lot of services, like suppose a chat service, a website, suppose a pub sub, and you want to actually have all those services joined together in some manner, all those services depend upon each other, but it's not like one service has to start for another service to work, then you would use event arc. So event arc would actually build a whole network out of them, help them communicate, but at the same time, it would not create dependencies. So yeah, that is event arc. So share my screen. Hope it's visible. Is it visible, guys? Right, okay. Yes, Shantana, I'm presenting. Okay. Right. Uh, first, how many of you have used Compute Engine? Tell me one service Compute Engine has. Compute Engine, Compute Engine. Think about it. The name gives it any. Game, the name gives it away. What is Compute Engine? Or what services does Compute Engine have? IAS, PAS, SAS, or any of the name, any of the services. Give me a name. I'm pretty sure you guys have used it. It's the very first lab. Yeah, it creates a virtual machine. Yes. I don't remember the name. The name itself is Virtual Machine Instances of the service. Uh, with Compute Engine, you can do a lot of stuff, but this is one of the things. You can create a virtual machine. This is the first thing that the Cloud Engineer Learning Path has. So yeah, you. other than that, you have BigQuery. That is a database service. That is what DBS stands for. You have App Engine. I told you about App Engine. Anthos. Let's come back to Anthos. Give me a moment. Interconnect. Cloud Interconnect ha helps you to connect services inside the cloud. Suppose you want to connect your uh, compute engine with your Firestore or maybe your network v VPC. Well, you would use interconnect. VPC is already present in the compute engine, but suppose like storage or BigQuery, but that time you would use interconnect. Firestore is basically storage, this fast storage. That's why it's known as Firestore. It's synonymous with Firebase and also, yeah, only Firebase. Also used for mainly mobile applications. Other than that, you have Cloud Storage. I already talked about Cloud Storage. Now, what is Anthos? Now, suppose, let, let me put you in a situation. What happens is uh, companies, what they try to do is they have, uh, they have some sort of a workflow and they try to be on one CSP, that is AWS, GCP, or some, some service. What happens? Whichever service will give them the better cost, they will shift to that service. Now, Anthos helps you in migration. What do I mean by that? Suppose you have an on-premises on -premises cloud. Suppose whatever work you did, it was on-premise, right? Now, what happens is, suppose you want to shift on the cloud, but everything that you have built on premise will have to be shifted onto the cloud. Anthos will help you when there is containers involved. Usually, when you, whenever you're talking about uh, things like uh, big companies making apps, then we will test it out on containers only because we don't want one machine for every version of the app. We want one computer which will handle 50 versions of the app. So we would use containers only. 
in the same way if there are containers we can shift them to cloud with the help of anthos right can anybody guess if not anthos if i am having virtual machines what was i use for uh, migration which service would i use for migration if i'm having virtual machines you can google it no issues let's see who googles first which service would i use if i am migrating virtual machines you can unmute you can type in the chat it's all good let's wait for one minute let's see who gives me the answer try 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 learn googling guys because without googling i don't think anything will be clear containers no containers containers is handled by anthos aws server migration service that does help but that is for aws we are talking about gcp let's see let's see try 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 google it's just one line google kubernetes no velostrata okay that that's a nice try but not really not velostrata velostrata is vsphere mm. right it's known as migrate for compute engine right okay you can just google about it it's known as migrate for compute engine let's see if that brings up to the right page migrate for compute engine yes um okay. this one give it a try i literally searched migrate for compute engine and this came up so yeah this is what helps you migrate virtual machines to your cloud well with that being said let's move on uh, when you will get this ppt you also have this uh, link this will link to the other gcp services that you have and there are some services that are on the free tier and some services that are exclusively on the premium and paid tier so do check out for those now ai services i am not really sure if the labs have anything related to ai but you know when people made cloud the people who made cloud they named everything so aptly that you can read the name and understand what they do here i'm telling you there are mainly three things that you require vision api natural language api and recommendations api right we will talk about all of these but these three are the most important vision api as it sounds it will help you derive insights insights as in data from images text and more custom or pretend models so the important thing is you can use custom images that is your own own models or pre-trained models. You don't need to know any of ML to actually use Vision API. You can have a picture of a dog uploaded to Vision API and Vision API will detect it as a, as a dog. So that easy. Video API is pretty much the same as Vision API, but with video. And here you kind of get to the very nitty gritties of uh, the latest video AI findings. That is, you have your Tesla and you have the traffic cameras that detect this is a bus and this is a truck and this is a car, etc., etc. So they usually use this service. The natural language API is very important. Suppose you have a newspaper, right? You take that newspaper, scan it, and you want all the information from it. You will be using natural language API, right? And remember, this is an API, right? This is not a service of its own. It's an API. It means you have to enable this API and then only you can use this API in the GCP. Right. Recommendations AI is basically like, uh, have you ever faced this situation? Like if you are on YouTube and you are watching, suppose a song, then the same song or similar songs 
but from the same artist will be recommended to you. Something like recommendations AI is used. It will take all your data, how you choose stuff, and then give you similar products or products that will make you engage more in whatever you're trying to make the customer engage in. Translation is basically translate between languages. I guess everybody has used Google Translate. Document AI is pretty much same as natural language API, but this is pretty, this is uh, actually here to simulate human review of documents. I would still suggest to go for natural language API. This is uh, actually for unstructured. This is structured. And talent solution is not really important, but this is more like a LinkedIn. This is a LinkedIn to create, read, update job postings and etc. But as I said, the main things that you will require is Vision API, Natural Language API, and Recommendations AI. Vision AI, sorry. So this all falls under the AI platform. I guess you have heard about the AI platform. And yeah. In GCP, you can get a fully managed SAS offering. So fully managed means you can take care of it all. And it's SAS, so you don't really have to care about how it's built. You only have to use the thing. Right. OK, I cannot move my. Hmm. What's very interesting is I cannot move past this. Lovely. Right. Is my screen still visible? Somebody give me a yes, no on mic. No, the no, the no. No. Yes. Yes. Okay, so lots of services. Right, tell me. We have already talked about a uh, BigQuery. BigQuery is done. That's not our BigQuery. We have talked about, no, we have not talked about it. So except BigQuery, let's cut out BigQuery. How many of you have used anything other than BigQuery in all of this? All of the mentioned services. How many of you have used any of these services? Let's see, let's see, let's see. No one. Nobody has used these services. OK. I'll just share my screen itself because I guess PowerPoint is not again detected in. But yeah, this is better, I guess. You can see everything that I can see. Right. So BigQuery is I've already talked about. Uh, Cloud Compose is create, schedule, monitor, and manage workflows using a fully managed orchestration built on Apache Airflow. Don't really worry about this. Data flow is important. This is used for pipelines. Remember, pipelines is related with workflows. And the main thing is this is real time. Okay. Real time batch data and stream data. So, like, if you're building a game or something, then try to go for data flow because it would require. Um, Real-time data, cloud data fusion also not very important for you as of now. Data prep by Trifecta. Trifecta is a company, and data prep is basically helps you in data pre-processing. 
it uh, takes it explores cleans and prepares data for analysis so you see this is data analysis we are talking about so no issues data proc is the next step of data prep it performs batch processing querying streaming the important part here is apache spark and hadoop remember these two because when they ask you questions they will usually mention these two and these services are very important if you're sitting for um, some sort of an exam or maybe even an interview these are things that they will like pull you up on so they will have questions like i have a hadoop service or i am using spark what would i use for uh, performing batch operations which service so the answer will be data prop in that case well pubsub is i have talked about pubsub i guess pubsub is basically publish and subscribe it helps you connect with your customers and we have cloud life sciences this is basically related with genomics and bio biomedical data since it's data analysis this is a pretty important part in gcp that medical people use right so not really sure i'm not able to go to the next screen no oh, but let's see issues what is the time uh, we are at 9:17 it's been 1 hour it's been about an hour so i'll leave it up to you guys do you want me to continue because after this somebody is going to show a hand on hands on do you want me to continue or we'll catch it up to the next next uh, session you guys can have a vote right here whoever is in here next session okay next right everybody is tired i guess or this is too much to take in in one session it's fine uh all right so we have vivek who's going to show us a hands on uh during this hands on it's a very simple hands on i guess some of you have done the lab also vivek you can share your screen uh we have uh, done this before you guys have done this before and the main thing that you should uh, look out for is what you are implementing while you are doing the lab so like for example scalability elasticity nobody is going to ask you that this is scalable or nobody is going to ask you that this is scalable right so the main thing that you are trying to focus on is understanding why you are doing it and how you are managing the scalable and the things like that so this is lab number gsp073 that is with the cloud storage right let's see let's have a quick session acha uh, guys uh, where did you say you were having the issue whoever said you were having the issue where did you say i will uh, talk with the the authorities then like i have to talk with quick labs once and g gd gccp india anyone where did you say you were having the issues once repeat please yeah like when i was going to create instances in the specified region uh, so you are trying to create instances but did you try other regions yeah i have tried but that's showing a problem with the machine type availability hmm. okay yeah we will continue no issue so yeah that is one i'll just write it down can't create vm instances on oh. us centrals are having a problem because i have seen the problem myself but can't help it otherwise uh, what is the other issue except the instances part
I guess Shami was telling. So I faced one problem that is during cluster creation. Uh, it took a lot of time. Like I had to sign out of the lab for that. Uh, how much time? Usually it takes around fifteen minutes for cluster creation and deletion. No, it was taking more than thirty minutes. In thirty, more than thirty minutes, it wasn't created. So I decided to <coughs> end. Okay. Okay. And uh, Dada, my problem was that uh, like just now, just this uh, Dada did like start lab. Actually, if I mm -hmm. click on start lab, then the folder is like buff. Like there's this uh, well, professional resources thing coming on the screen, the pop up, and then Which, it is there. Uh, the, is that happening for every lab or a certain lab? Uh, for most, like uh, since oh, day before yeah. yesterday, it, it's been happening like for most lab. So guys, uh, look at this. This is an object file. They uh, are mentioning the task two is an object because I told you images and videos are all objects. So any type of object file, we take it up to our cloud storage. Right. So I'm noting down these issues and I'm going to address them in the next meeting we have with GDSC, sorry, GCCP India. And Anushka, you are facing these issues from when? From creating Kubernetes. That code. no, no. I mean the date. Oh, date. Uh, from yesterday. Abhirat says GKE lab VM is not the answer within the time given. Virtual machine is not creating. Okay, guys, this uh, task three is basically um, IAM, it stands for Identity and Access Management. So in this, we see who can see what and who can access what. As I said, uh, cloud storage is our IAS service, and this is the place where we see the permissions. Since it's IAS, we have to care about where it and what is stored. We also have to care about what is being stored in that, and we have to care about who's accessing that. So it's all part of those three. So he's adding principles. So this is taken care of. Okay. Any other issues that you want me to address? Just tell me. I'll I'll raise these issues in the next meeting then. It's usually on the side of uh, quick labs, but there could be a problem with student specific accounts. So no other issues, right? So the issues that there are is the provisioning lab resources takes a lot of time the clusters take a lot of time for building and the vms are not creating the specified region any other issues so that was the lab it really did so once you hit 100 you don't need to go for the other uh, tasks but you can still do them if you want to learn no issues with that Okay, um, while the lab is going on and doing everything, uh, how many of you have exams next week? So I'll schedule the next um, session that way. If you have an exam next week, then just drop it in the chat. Doesn't seem like anybody has an exam next week. Okay, nice. So that was pretty much the lab, I guess. The lab is done. And this is the last task, I think. Yeah. 
right so with that being done yeah you should get something like this i guess you all have done this right uh, some things i want to iterate upon so firstly very firstly um the last date to complete all of the labs and everything is uh, uh, 14th december right it's a 14th december so within 14th december i want you guys to finish all the labs and on finishing i am not sure i'm not being told yet but i guess there are prices for the people who finish so yeah try to finish your labs and of course when you get badges you can add them to your linkedin and everything you can have a specific section for that with that being said that was pretty much about gccp day two this ppt is not even half completed i am going to talk about more of this on the next day so yeah that was it and let me know how was the session guys this was this is the last part just give me a good feedback give me feedback and uh, we will end here okay great so some questions i would like to have for your guys help how long do you want a session to be generally generally how long of a session would you like like today's was approximately one hour yesterday's was two hours like last time last time was two hours one hour one hour 1.5 hour okay okay so i'll so one hour is the base for now on one hour seems fine okay great and what about the time do you want it to be this time or even later earlier it's totally your choice Seven thirty ish okay, okay okay this time nice okay okay Right. So around this time, we'll have the meeting. One hour from now seems pretty much fine. Uh, with that being said, uh, that was pretty much it about GCCP day two. I will meet you for GCCP day three, where we will talk more about services, all the services that GCP provides us, and we will have some more labs to look into. Do you like to have hands-on, or would you like to see something else? Hands-on, OK. Hands-on is pretty nice. Today's lab was a bit easy. No issue with the hands-on. But when we come to a little bit complex like Jenkins and HTTP load balancers, that's when things get a little bit out of hand. Hands-on. So hands-on is great. I will make sure we have hands-on in every session. Right. So that was it. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining. It was lovely having you. Yes, Piyush, we will have a recording on YouTube. Not not maybe on YouTube, but on the website, on the GDSC website. Thank you, guys. It was lovely presenting to you and talking about cloud. Bye. Stop recording. You can you can leave one by one.